Okay, so I've drawn the ANOVA table. Let's go ahead and put in the information that we need to fill in. So, degrees of freedom for treatments, remember there were, if you look at our results from our experiment, there were one, two, three, four fertilizers, so the degrees of freedom is three. For blocks, there was three blocks, so the degrees of freedom is two. The total degrees of freedom is basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, minus one, so eleven, right? And then the area degrees of freedom, if you add these two together, that would give you five. Something plus five has to equal eleven. What's the something? The something is six, right? So five plus six must be eleven, and that's how we get the area degrees of freedom most efficiently. If you want to use the formula for it, you have to take the total sample size twelve and subtract off the number of uh, treatments of blocks and you end up with the error. So, you know, error degrees of freedom as a formula is harder to remember, so it's just easier to think of it as, you know, treatments minus one, blocks minus one, the total number of values minus one, and then error must add up to, must be the value missing to add up to 11. Okay, very good. Let's do the sum of squares then next. The sum of squares next is going to come from the work that we did earlier when we did our data step. So, sum of square for treatment, SST is 9.6 repeating. The blocks SSB was 78.16 repeating, right? The error, the SSE was 7.83, 7.83 repeating. And the total sum of squares was 95.6, 95.6 repeating. Now from there, the mean square is just dividing 3 into that, right? So I'll go in there 3.2222, I believe. Let's double check that. So we'll have 9.6 repeating divided by 3 and we get our 3.22222 like I said so 3.2 repeating and then we'll have 78.16 repeating so that we keep the sixes in there and then divide by 2 and of course you get 39.083 repeating so 39.083 repeating then we'll do 7.83 so 7.8 3 repeating divided by 6 and we end up with 1.30 let's just call it uh, 6 for round numbers or actually I'll do 5, 6 just to give us some places now. Now that error is going to be divided into each of these separately to produce our F test stats. So our data step is basically done. What we want to do for our test stat which is these F positions here, we're going to need a test stat for the treatments if we want to test the hypothesis we have listed here. If we want to test the idea whether the blocks are significantly different from each other as well, we can also get a test stat for that. So let's do that. So remember the way we did it for treatments. We take this number and divide it into that number and that will produce our test stat, right? So this number into that number. Let's do that then. So I'm going to do I'm actually going to store my error, which is the 1.3056, in my calculator as x, because I'm going to use it twice here, so I'm just going to store it, and then I'm going to do 3.22222 divided by that error, uh, sum square error, mean square error, pardon me, and we get 2.468. So 2.468. We'll just do it out the three decimal places. So that's my F. Uh, test statistic for the treatments, and now I'll do the same for the blocks. Remember this number, this MSE, goes into the MS for blocks, the mean square for blocks, so MSE into MSB, and we end up producing, again, another test stat. Okay, so let's do that. 39.083 repeating divided by that error, right? So the MSE, and it'll give us 29.936. 29.936. So you can see the blocks are highly significant, most likely, because that uh, test stat is quite large. Um, this might be why they chose to put the watering scheme as the blocks, because they may have already known that it was significant, and they may not have been interested in that as much as the fertilizers themselves. Okay, good. Now from here, what we're going to do is get our critical value, so let's draw our bell curves. We're going to have, not our bell curves, our F curves, but they kind of look like skewed bell curves, right? I'm going to draw two of them here, one for the blocks and one for the treatments. Okay, so there are my two curves. Got my starting points at zero, and then I'm going to have my rejection regions, right? Let's use 5% alpha for both of them, so use 0.05 for both of them, 
And our critical value, remember what it's going to be here. This critical value located at this position is going to be F, the one for treatments, if we're doing the treatments first, right? We're going to have numerator degrees of freedom, three. Denominator degrees of freedom is the error degrees of freedom. That's six, and then 0.05, right? 0 0.05. And for this one, this is the one for blocks, we'll have F, the blocks degrees of freedom is two, comma, six, because the denominator was the error again, and then 0 0.05, so two, comma, 6.05. Let's go to our table and we're going to look up 36.05 and 26.05 and we'll get our two critical values for the bottom of the drawing there. Alright, so for the treatment degrees of freedom, we had, or the treatment critical value I should say, we had uh, numerator degrees of freedom 3 and denominator of 6, so we have 4.76 as our critical value. And then for the blocks, we had degrees of freedom 2 for the numerator and denominator of 6, so we get 5.14. Okay, so we found our answer is to be, for the first one, 4.76, and for the second one, we found 5.14. And when we look at our test stats, we see that the F test stat for treatments falls short of the rejection region. In other words, it lands over here, so we do not reject. Do not reject HO, and therefore we do not support HA. So this is for the treatments, remember, right? So that's for this set of hypotheses, right? Now for the blocks, we actually have a different conclusion. This value lands way over here, so we conclude then reject HO versus, uh, sorry, support. I meant to write support. Support HA. Support HA. So essentially what we have here is two different results, right? And if we want to think about this, we say that because we didn't reject here, we're saying the treatments are not significant. Because we did reject here, the blocks are significant. So just remember that shorthand there. The treatment or treatments are not significant. Blocks are significant. Blocks are significant. So what we've just shown here is that, and this happens in ANOVA testing, is very easy because we have these very you know, simple uh, repeated HO and HA for every problem. We always know that if we don't reject, we're saying the treatments are not significant, meaning that they don't seem to have a significant effect on the yield. And in this case, the blocks were significant because we did reject, so we say then in that case that the watering scheme or the blocks do seem to matter on the production of plant matter, whatever they're growing here, whatever plant or crop they're trying to grow. So it looks like the treatments don't have a tremendous effect, which means any fertilizer here would really work. Or perhaps it means that neither of the fertilizers are worth, none of the fertilizers are worthwhile. The only thing bad about this design, they used four different kinds of fertilizers. They didn't use a control though. So because they're all the same here, all we can say is what? If we are not able to reject HO, if we can't reject HO, we're saying they're all the same. And by saying all they're, they're all the same, all we're saying then is what? They all work equally well. Or it could be that none of them work, and so they work the same because none of them work, right? Now, if you had a control, you'd be able to distinguish between those two things. That's why it's important to put a control into the model, right? So let's say if A had been a control, that meant it was like a placebo, like you were putting something on there that you knew was not a fertilizer that wasn't going to help the plants, right? Or you had one, one set of crops that didn't have anything applied to them. If that were the case, then you'd be able to say what? That none of these fertilizers work, because if they all work just as well as putting nothing on the plants, then that means that you know you might as well put nothing, because nothing is free, right? Where fertilizers cost money. Now, they tested four fertilizers, though, and if all four fertilizers produced the same average crop yield, then that would kind of imply that you, know, you could use either one, maybe you just buy the cheapest. But unfortunately, we don't know if maybe that doesn't work, right? Maybe all the fertilizers are useless for this crop. And if that's the case, then, you know, they aren't able to see that here because they don't have the control in the study. So that's a flaw in the study design. But other than that, we have our results, and so we've done our work. And that's randomized block design in a nutshell. We're basically still interested in treatments, right? Um, blocks are there in the problem, and you can test them to see if they're significant. But oftentimes, um, you know, we assume the blocks are significant, and that's why we block them out so they don't interfere with the, the test we really want to know, which is basically the treatments, whether the treatments are significant or not. All right, so that's the results, and uh, hopefully that all made sense.